Well, so welcome to the uh, 18th Papalardo uh, Symposium. This is, um, what? Is it, it's the 18th? 19th, 18th, yeah, that's what it said here. Yeah, 18th. Uh, so this is a, a, a day where we uh, hear from our, our Papalardo fellows, and we're very happy that uh, Neil is here also to participate, along with um, Howard Messing, Kurt Marble, and uh, our, our next speaker, uh, Mark Mueller, who will make some um, introductory remarks. And I'll introduce Mark to make introductory remarks. Uh, Mark is an uh, active researcher here at, at, at MIT, uh, following time here as, uh, as, as a student. And then uh, his, his career took a, another path for a while. And uh, we're quite happy to have him back with us, both as a researcher and a supporter. So uh, Mark, please uh, start the ceremonies. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. I'm going to basically just repeat that introduction briefly. Uh, but my name is Mark Mueller. I'm very happy to be here. Um, my involvement with the Papillardo Fellowship Program arises out of these three distinct parts of my life, as Peter already mentioned. Um, I was an undergraduate here in physics, which was a very formative experience in my life. Um, I'm a donor and a supporter of the department. Very proud of that, being able to participate in supporting the department. And I'm a current researcher in the Center for Theoretical Physics. So it's truly a privilege to open today's Papillardo Symposium. The Papillardo Fellowship Program here in the Department of Physics at MIT, which will be soon celebrating its 20th anniversary, plays a significant and I would say a unique role in the life of the department. Uh, my remarks today will be an attempt to briefly describe and celebrate that role and the example that Neil and Jane Papillardo have set for all of us in creating and fostering an environment in which fundamental research in physics can live and thrive. What I have to say today, and I think what all of the speakers have to say today, is addressed to multiple audiences that share an interest in physics. Um, allow me to recognize some of them, the Papillardos who created and sustained the program, the Papillardos, Papillardo fellows themselves, whose work is the essence of the program, um, and who also benefit from these discussions today and the discussions that they have with one another, uh, the MIT physics faculty and administrators whose stewardship guides the program on a day-to-day -day basis, the broader physics community at MIT consisting of students, postdocs, and faculty, and other friends and supporters of the department. Even beyond all of these people, um, we should remember the global reach of MIT via social media and the connections to young people with dreams about becoming physicists who may someday be standing here and taking their place among today's Papillardo Fellows, describing their own work in physics. So as a researcher, to start there, my involvement with the Papillardo program has been the most direct. If I had to summarize that involvement in a single word, it would be this lunch. <laughs> of course, I'm being a bit facetious, but uh, only by way of introduction to what I think is an important aspect of the program, and that is connecting physicists to each other. Physics over the past several decades has become increasingly specialized, and the demands of career advancement, particularly for postdoctoral fellows and junior faculty, can lead to segmentation in physics departments that is not in harmony with the broad and encompassing spectrum of physics. The MIT physics department, in my experience, has a culture of fostering collegiality and cross-disciplinary interactions. But these interactions are not simply created ex nihilo. Every Wednesday during the fall and spring semesters, the Papillardo fellows gather for lunch. And that gathering includes MIT physics faculty, visiting faculty, and other physics researchers. Experimentalists and theorists are represented uh, among the fellows themselves and among the faculty and other researchers. Sometimes the conversation is just mundane or personal, uh, but more often the conversation is about physics. The latest developments with LIGO, results or rumors from the LHC, the state of the art in implementing quantum computing, possible discrepancies in the Hubble parameter measured at different redshifts, a new understanding of the EMC effect in nuclei, superconductivity in magic angle graphene, and how quantum information and black hole physics might fit together 
and much, much more. These aren't examples that I just invented. These are things that I've had discussions with during the course of these, with m multiple people during the course of these lunches. And I have to say, I have frequently learned more in 15 or 20 minutes of listening to one of the physicists at my table describe his or her research than I have in many of the official seminars that are on the calendar each week. In addition to physics per se, the Papillardo program creates opportunities for career development that can be crucial for postdoctoral fellows about to embark on the next stage of their careers as faculty. In my own experience as a postdoc, this kind of mentoring for career development was completely absent. By contrast, I have seen examples at the Papillardo lunches of senior people discussing with the fellows how to make, successful, make a successful transition from postdoc to professor, the kind of lore that does not get communicated often or ever through formal channels. So whether or not the lunch conversations lead to immediate cross-disciplinary breakthroughs, the goal of connecting physicists and sharing the broader goals of, uh, and serving the broader goals of sharing knowledge in physics is certainly being realized in this program. Uh, personal connections are being forged among the Papillardo Fellows and between the Fellows and faculty that will last over the course of their entire careers. In the end, all communities are built on personal relationships, and physics is no different. Now, speaking as a donor and supporter of physics at MIT, and as someone with a few years of experience in the business world, I would like to express my respect for what Neil has accomplished in his long career as an entrepreneur and founder of Meditech and to express my gratitude for the generosity of the Papillardos in establishing the fellowship program that we are celebrating today. It's obvious that this respect and gratitude is shared by many, many people at MIT. As all of you know, Neil has also contributed in other substantial ways to MIT, as a life member of the MIT Corporation, and through his support of other major initiatives in physics and in engineering at MIT. To me, what Neil represents more than anything is personal involvement in the causes he chooses to support. It would be presumptuous of me or anyone to attempt to represent Neil's philanthropic motivations or goals. On a smaller scale, I know that my own support of physics at MIT has deeply personal roots, and I would not be comfortable having somebody else attempt an analysis of my motivations. But I will say this, the personal involvement that I feel is exemplified by Neil on a much greater scale in a way that has changed MIT and the physics department in particular in inestimably positive ways for years to come. In some ways, there is an even larger hope and a challenge embodied in his example. Most people will never achieve the level of financial success that Neil has, and that's fine. People can make wonderful contributions to the world in many ways. But all of us can be involved in supporting physics at MIT in our own personal ways, in ways that will no doubt evolve over the course of our careers and our lives. Perhaps some of you will take on the difficult task of convincing the public of the multiple ways that physics and science more broadly can be relevant to their lives, and encouraging the public funding of fundamental science in partnership with private benefactors. So yes, the money's important. It's essential. But the largest lesson is about building and sustaining our community in a thoughtful way, and Neil has led by example. Finally, as an MIT alumnus, um, Neil was course six, class of 64. I was course eight, and I also graduated sometime in the 20th century. I have to say that nobody understands this place at a gut level better than the undergraduates who have struggled and suffered and ultimately triumphed who have walked down the infinite corridor at 2 a.m. getting ready to start their next problem set. Again, I can't presume to plumb the depths of Neil's commitment to MIT, but I have to guess that some of it was forged in the fires of hell in those early days. <laughs> MIT is a special place, and it is always changing, more rapidly now than ever. What makes it special are the people who understand its culture and who want to carry it forward to meet the next set of challenges in research, in teaching, and in service. The Papillardo Fellowship Program is now a part of that culture, an important part, 
And I hope you will join me in thanking Neil and Jane once again for their vision and commitment. Thank you.